The world is changing. When you look around, you can see that things aren't as they used to be, and they're only changing faster and faster each day. In spite of all the negatives you may encounter around you, human beings are harnessing the power of technology to innovate themselves into a better world at a stunning pace. So today, we're going to take a look at five mind-blowing technologies that will change the world. And before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoy the video. Number one, artificial neurons. Medical technology has progressed at an astounding rate in modern times. That pace is only quickening as one of the most complicated forms of medicine, organ replacement, becomes more and more possible. Recently, the practice of replicating human organs has made the leap into the replacement of actual neurons in the nervous system. The possibility of replacing faulty nervous system components with new neurons attached to silicone chips within the human body has the potential to essentially cure things like Alzheimer's and certain types of heart failure. Anytime a horrible disease is cured is a monumental moment in human history, and we may just be on the brink of several such moments thanks to this new mind-blowing technology. We are building uh, artificial neurons out of silicon. Uh, they behave identically to biological neurons. Um, so, uh, more specifically, we have uh, constructed uh, silicon models of uh, um, hippocampal neurons and respiratory neurons in the, in the cortex. Biological uh, neurons typically have a very complicated uh, electrical behavior. Antibiotics. Keeping with modern medicine for a second, we all know that our oceans are an absolute wonderland of microorganisms that haven't even begun to be thoroughly explored. Included in this vast sea of bacteria and such are surely bugs that could both be incredibly beneficial and very harmful to humans. Scientists working on antibiotics would love to search these out in order to utilize anything in order that might be helpful in treating medical conditions but also to develop treatments for the harmful organisms that have yet to be discovered in the oceans. The best way to do this is obviously to swab the rectums of surfers? Why didn't I think of that? The name of the organization spearheading this effort is, you guessed it, Beach Bums. Well, I need a break after that image, so why not take a second to hit that subscribe button and we'll get right back into the video once we've all cleansed out collective palettes. Internet everywhere. The internet is one of the most powerful societal forces in all of human history. If you take a look at the world pre and post internet, you'll see two different places. One can argue that the world before the internet was simpler, slower paced, and less conducive to the crime that takes place online. We also need to consider all of the good that has stemmed from the proliferation of internet access, one of which is access to basically all of the world's libraries of information to anybody anywhere as long as you have a device and an internet connection. This is an unprecedented equalizer among humans because now that we have the internet, you don't have to be wealthy to learn. Furthermore, the internet has given us the ability to work remotely, which made normal life for many people possible during the pandemic, and continues to allow people who live in rural areas to have similar jobs and education to those located in big cities, massively reducing unemployment and undereducation in these areas. I could go on and on, but the point is that the internet is a big force for good, which improves life everywhere it goes, regardless of the downsides that inevitably come with such power. Now that we can all agree on that, imagine a future where everyone had access to the internet. I'm talking even people living in the most remote parts of the world where no company would dream of running fiber optic cable for tens of thousands of dollars per mile. That's where the future is headed, and it's awesome. But simply, several companies, especially Google, have plans in the works to float routers to the edge of outer space using balloons or other means to deliver the internet anywhere in its path. This, of course, presents many challenges, one of which is the popping of balloons due to the changes in pressure at ascending altitudes. But the methods of accomplishing this task are rapidly improving and will soon deliver this most powerful tool to every corner of the Earth. Inside the massive hangars at Moffett Federal Airfield, Google is attempting to do something that balloon experts deemed impossible, deliver high-speed internet access to the most remote corners of the globe. The first 60 or so balloons we launched all burst when they got to altitude, which was very sort of disheartening. This is something that has never been asked of balloons before, to be reliable and to do what we expect them to do. 
before it was just sort of like a vehicle to gain knowledge. Now we're trying to make a business. Many of these four billion people, even paying um, what they can afford, one or two percent of their monthly income, can now afford to have internet access, uh, and it's a very uh, good business in itself. Increasing the internet penetration by 10% in a country will increase the GDP by about 1.4% um, per year. So in many ways, technologies that can increase the internet penetration of 10 or 20% can double the growth of standard of living of half the countries in the world. It's a big thing. Yeah, it is. Number four, coffee for fuel. I know what you may be thinking, of course the world runs on coffee. I drink it all the time to keep moving, but that's not quite what I'm getting at here. Now I'm sure we can all agree that coffee's awesome. Millions are with us on that point. But this love of the magical little beans ground up and steeped in water creates over 200,000 tons of waste every year in the city of London alone. So the company BioBean and others have taken quite a bold step into the future to try and use most of that waste to create energy. This not only reduces the pile of coffee grounds in the landfill, but will also lessen the use of dirtier forms of energy such as fossil fuels. So drink on, coffee lovers. It's good for the planet. Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee. Does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? Does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? What's going on, man? You want, you want coffee? I just, I just made coffee. Does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? Buddy, you want Number five, rapid charging car batteries. Continuing on with some futuristic energy technology, let's talk about electric cars. These have come a long way in a short time and are popping up on the road more and more each day. But one of the things that is hindering the progress of electric vehicles, the battery life. If you can't take a long road trip in it, most people aren't going to want to own one as their primary vehicle. While gasoline vehicles can refuel completely in a matter of a few short minutes, electric car batteries require at least half an hour and up to eight hours to refuel completely. So even if there were plenty of charging stations along the highways, you'd still have a huge pile of Tesla drivers all waiting around for their cars to charge. Not the kind of part I would like to attend. The main reason it takes so long is that rapidly charging such a battery causes lithium spikes, which quickly degrades the battery over time. However, it has recently been shown that heating the batteries to 140 degrees Fahrenheit will stop the harmful effects of rapid charging and allow a battery to be filled in as little as 10 minutes, which is much more tolerable amount of time to be stuck at a charging station. The design in the works right now uses a thin nickel foil, which, when charging time comes, runs an electric current around the battery to quickly heat it up to the appropriate temperature. After charging is complete, the vehicle's cooling system is responsible for bringing the temperature of the battery back down. And then you're back on the road. Once this technology is integrated into the electric car industry, we will be one step closer to the common use of electric vehicles. How long does it take to charge? And while well, that's a perfectly valid and simple question, the answer is anything but simple. And that's because there are many things that affect the speed of charging. For example, the type and power level of the charging station. The size of your battery pack. How full or depleted is the battery already? And even environmental factors like the temperature outside. As such, the answer can literally range anywhere from five minutes to five days. Well, I hope your mind has been blown. Mine sure has, and I hope we can all proceed with a profound optimism thanks to the wonders of technology permeating our world and making life just that much sweeter. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and let us know what you think in the comments. Lastly, be sure to subscribe and we will see you right here next time for another great video.